on today's episode. I'm in the process of fixing up this model aircraft, which was an, an abandoned project. And although the thing has never flown, clearly there is something not right with the way that the steerable nose wheel is attached. The bottom of the firewall here is clearly cracked. Let's take a closer look at that. Here then you can clearly see it. Uh, no idea how the original owner managed to achieve that. This being a very tough piece of what appears to be nylon. It has that oily texture to it. Uh, which usually makes it very, very strong. Unfortunately, it makes it also practically ungluable by 99% of glues known to man. This being the only support for the nose wheel, it's important that we fix this and as strongly as possible. If glue is not an option, then what I'm going to try today is using the soldering iron to weld it back together. This is going to be my first attempt at this. As I like to say, uh, I'll make the mistakes so you don't have to. Let's see how we get on. In preparation, preparation being key in all things, I've cleaned the crud off of the end of the soldering iron. I'd previously been using that to cut out chunks of foam on my little glider conversion. The other thing that I've done is to scan the firewall and noted the dimension of the hole there. That's such that uh, if I had to make another one, I can import this scan into Fusion 360 and create myself another part. Starting on this side then, I've checked that it's level and held it in place with some elastic bands. I suggest you do this in a well ventilated area, melting plastic fumes not being generally good for you. I can see it smoking now. One benefit of using this gun rather than a standard soldering iron is that it only heats when you're pressing the trigger in. That gives you a little bit more control. I'm going to go along the crack now. And I'm trying to get around about half the way through the material. This may seem counterintuitive, actually digging into the crack, but having watched some other videos on the subject, that's the way I'm going to try it. Here we can see the channel that I've made. What I'm going to do now is to infill that using a nylon tie wrap. Finally then, I'm going to try and smooth the whole thing over. Finally, see if I can smooth that over with uh, some glass paper. There then, at least cosmetically, that looks like a reasonable fix. I'm going to repeat the same on the other side now. Well, I'm quite pleased with the way that this is turning out. There's no sign of the crack there, and I'm trying to stress it there. See, I don't want to, to break it, but it's working well. I think the last thing that I'm going to do is in true Frankenstein style to put some metal staples just across the back here to reinforce it even further. These are just regular woodworking staples that I've cut to the thickness of the material. Pressing it down firmly there, actually impressed into the plastic. The idea for this came obviously from looking at repairs to ancient Chinese pottery done with iron staples and still around hundreds of years later.
that's all the staples in place. Now the last one passing into the thicker nylon there. I'll give this a, a clean up and then I'll show it to you under the microscope. I think we can see that uh, that has affected a nice strong repair. A quick look under the microscope now. See the staples in place, no real sign of the crack itself there. Looking at the other side. Some maybe some vestiges of the crack there, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think so. Looking at the edge there, just flexing it, can't see any issue there. Similarly on the other edge, you can see I'm pressing exactly where the crack was and there's no problem there at all. Overall then, I think that that's affected as better fix as we're going to get. I'm very pleased with the result. All we'll have to do now is to practice some three-point landings. Thanks for watching.